So today we're going to talk about Treebeard. That's the next chapter. Um, what do we make of Treebeard, the chapter, the character, and Fangorn, the forest? What I was going to talk about is the choice that Jackson made, right? Uh -huh. To have Treebeard kind of attack... Like, like the difference between the movie and and the book and 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 Treebeard's introduction and and particularly this this scene right here. Yeah, where where you first meet Treebeard, he attacks uh, Grishnak. He, he shot first and asked questions later in in, in the in Jackson. uh, in, in Jackson's. But he clearly heard the orc voice, so like he probably was like, "Oh, there's an orc." In the book, he was like. Um, don't be too like basically don't be too hasty you know he, he told the the hobbits he's like you know like basically he's like you don't like had i not you know had i not heard your voices before i saw you or whatever i might have stepped on you are they still wearing the elven cloaks they are they are yeah they still have the elven so cloaks. The only i guess he has pretty good eyesight then right right because he he heard that well they, they walked literally right in front of him i mean he was still he's he was still right you know st standing on the hill when mary and pippin first meet him even though he's like saying like i would have stepped on you or whatever right okay he's st he still seems like a very peaceful benign kind of uh of creature being you know what i'm saying like like yeah. he, he comes off as good and not at you know like um right right well he doesn't want to be hasty so like when he right so when pippin says he almost felt he liked the place right yeah um that's when you first meet treebeard and he says almost felt you liked the forest that's good who said a strange voice turn around and let me have a look at your faces and this is this i always thought this was kind of a strange thing to say i almost feel that i dislike you both so he heard their voices yeah but he didn't see their faces so, right. but well, maybe I mean, he, so he, he, he actually, maybe it's hearing the voices that keeps him from stepping on them or keeps him from yeah, attacking yeah. them as orcs, right? Which he would otherwise yeah, yeah. probably do. Um, but when he says he almost, uh, he said, I almost feel I dislike that. I dislike you both, but do not let us be hasty. Turn around. Yeah. So, I mean. Whether or not, like, I always thought that was kind of odd that his first inclination is to dislike them. Well, probably because, yeah, I mean, he's he's equating them to man, to like to like to to the men, to to um, orcs that that basically are, are there to cut the forest down, right, to do no good. So he he right. assumes that oh, these are obviously not trees; these are obviously not like deer. Um, yeah, they're they're some new creature, and so his first instinct is maybe that this creature is a threat right right but right. he likes their voices but here's the thing though like like in like this is a nice exchange like i've always i always enjoyed reading the the dynamic between treebeard and mary and pippin and, mm -hmm. and and the ants in general because there's a little bit of levity there and but i think that in the jackson movie like the jackson movie right where treebeard is immediately on the attack and immediately shows how ruthless and and not cruel but um you know right. like where he killed the orc without a second thought and and he was right. getting ready to do it mary and pippin right um i for a movie it's exciting it's like oh look at that you know but right i don't think it does the character of treebeard it, it, it's too one-dimensional like so because when when because when the 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 ants actually wake up and and destroy Isengard. It's it's right. a complete like one one eighty from from this this being that you meet right. in this chapter. I, I I agree with you. I I think that you know that attack of the orc, although it shows the kind of the dumber audience that oh this is a good guy because he just attacked an orc. Yeah. Um. I don't like it as a longtime fan of Tolkien simply because like, I don't usually go look for looking for inconsistencies between Jackson and Tolkien or whatever, but, but I didn't like that particular choice because you're right. Just kind of like what you were saying. The whole point of this is like, you're showing the, or the ants kind of wake up from their tree-ness yeah. into like activity. 
And if he's already acting in such a deliberate and violent fashion against orcs, it doesn't really show that progression at all. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I suppose that, that um, you know, like it's probably hard to film the end moot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, speaking of that, Treebeard, the chapter, it seems like, you know, the, because they're so long-winded, as it were, the ants, they never really laundry listed the grievances they had against Saruman, did they? Did I miss something? It seems like they should have they should have come to the Entmoot and, and, and Tolkien, maybe. This is just a theory. Speculate. Like, would it have been different if they came to the Entmoot and Tolkien kind of said, oh, and then um, Big Briar came up. He's a tall, you know, willow or something. And he yeah. said, oh, and last week Saruman came and... Hey, he chopped my down my wife. <laughs> Yeah, he chopped down my wife. <laughs> I had the last of the end wives, and she's gone now. Right. Saruman, um, Saruman made her into a chest of drawers. <laughs> Saruman made her into a magic wardrobe, and it disappeared from <laughs> place. Saruman made my son into a hat stand. <laughs> Haberdasher stand. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I mean, like, I I just can picture all these ends like raising their hand, and each one of them has like something like, infuriating that Saruman did, and then they are, then they're all like, "Let's get them, guys!" My uncle Nigel is now at Davenport in Saruman's Saruman's study. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Okay, but the point is, is I because I mean, they're all kind of talking at the same time. But everyone was like talking, and they like I think they were like they can talk and listen, you know. So they they were probably all airing their grievances at once. Oh right, yeah. Can they all talk at the same time? Well, they did. They were like oh. all making like you know like, right like, room uh, room sounds, room, yeah. room room sounds, and like yeah. every once in a while you'd hear a room 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 go above everybody. Like they were making a, a point, or whatever. Um, Treebeard came over. And brought quick beam. He was like, "Oh, this is the uh, closest thing we have to a hasty end. You guys should get along famously, or whatever he said." <laughs> right, <you know>? right. <laughs> and then they're like, they were like looking at him, waiting for like sign, like to, like to show signs of hastiness. Which to me was kind of like saying, "Like this is my friend uh, Casey. He is so funny. Just wait." And then you're kind of like sitting there waiting, <laughs> waiting for, for him to Casey make. to be funny. And it's like. But but what was like, it that like Quick that, Beam did? What was it that Quick Beam did to? Uh, oh, he said be seen yes as hasty. He he answered an ant before the ant was. Oh, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try that again. So, what was it that Quick Beam did yes. to? <laughs> that was not a. It was not a yes or no question. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. So what did Quick Beam do to he make answered him? Su- a, he answered an, uh, an older end before uh, before he said uh, got his question out. Okay. Anyhow. Anyway, um, but I think there's. Can we talk more seriously? If we shall. Maybe? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let's we'll do try. it. Treebeard. He seems surprised that they would just come right out and say, "Well, what's your name? What do you call yourself?" And he's like, "Yeah, Whoa, no, that would be telling. That would be too hasty." You know? Yeah, but but they're like, my name is Pippin, and some people like Peregrine took, and some people call me Pippin or even Pip, and 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 Treebeard. You can like, like I felt that his brain was gonna explode. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. wow. Wait a minute. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down, rapscallion. But right, right. but that's but that's what made it like again, kind of funny and kind of like yep. a nice little back and forth right. where we. Where you have like the old grandfather getting to know the the young the young teenagers and right. and they have more in common than than you might think, but still kind of like that whole generational difference. Even though you know Treebeard's right. been yeah, there. From I, I get it. That's interesting. That's yeah. The idea that Treebeard takes a long time to say things is not just. I mean, it's not for nothing. It's not just a trivial quirk of his personality. 
you right. know, and it's and I think of course you could say, well, of course he takes a long time to say things because trees live a long time. You know, a lot of most big trees live much longer than people, so their their sense of time is such that you know they would take a long time to say something because they have a long time to spare, right? Right. Um, but it's almost like there's a almost an ideological or theoretical rationale behind this taking of a long time to say things because for Fangorn or the for Treebeard words or names are not just supposed to be like a label that something gets words and names are supposed to like tell that thing's story so yeah. and and Treebeard says this like if you live a long time then you're going to have a long name because your name tells your story at the top of 606 for i'm not going to tell you my name not yet at any rate a queer half knowing half humorous look came with a green flicker into his eyes for one thing it would take a long while my name is growing all the time and i have lived a very long long time so my name is like a story real names tell you the story of the things that they belong to in my language in old entish as you might say it is a lovely language, but it takes a very long time to say anything in it because we do not say anything in it unless it is worth taking a long time to say and listen to. Right. Yeah. And it's funny that, that he kind of comes back to that, let's call it a, a theory of languages needing to be, or names needing to be long to represent their duration in time when he says, oh, oh, Hill, this is kind of the same idea. Hill is short, but uh, it, it is a hasty word for a thing that has stood here ever since this part of the world has was shaped. Right. Never mind, let us leave it and go. So he's like, well, if, if it's a hill, if it's been here forever, then the name Hill should be super long because it would tell the story of that hill. <laughs> You, you have, know, a, you have a, a wise crack for me? I do. You know what Treebeard's <laughs> real name was? Treebeard Johan Gamble Putty. Dubon, house firm, Spendenschlit, Kraskrenbon, Free Digger Dangle Dungle Bar Steinbon, Neck Thresher, Apple Banger, Horowitz, Tickle Ensick, Grand and Oddish Bell Tickle, Grandish, Grundle Nice, Belt of Wasser, Kirstlich, Imbel, Eisenbahnwagen, Guten Abend, Bitte, Einen Nuremberger Bratwurstel, Gespürt mit zwei Marke Lube, Hunsfurt, Gumberabe, Schonendanke, Kaltzweich, <laughs> Mittelracke, Von Hartkopf of Ulm. Silly party. Anyway, yeah, not. I didn't hear a word you said because I was trying to look up the name. Oh, good. It's you fine. Made some I was good like, points, though. <laughs> but no, I did make some good points. So you'll yes. have to go back and watch the video and you'll, you'll see. I know. The, but actually, um, I want to do yes. say one more, mention one more thing that, like the hill and like Treebeard himself, um, seems like it should have a, like, you know how I was just saying, as you weren't paying attention looking up this long yes. name. Um, no, it's fine. Um, basically what, saying that name? you mean, mean Johan Campbell Putty von De Bonn, House Firm, Spendenschlit, Kraskrenbon, Free Digger Dangle Dungle Bar Steinbon, Neck Thresher, Apple Banger, Horowitz, Tickle Ensick, Grand and Oddish Bell Tickle, Grandish, Grundwald Nice, Belt of Wasser, Kirstlich, Imbel, Eisenbahnwagen, Guten Abend, Bitter, Eine Nuremberger Bratwurstel, Gespürt mit zwei Marke Lube, Hunsfurt, Gumberabe, Schonendanke, Kaltzweich, Mittelracke, Von Hartkopf of Ulm. But Treebeard thinks that things that are worthy of talking about should take a long, long time to talk about, to express right. the weight, dignity, history of those things, right? That's why on 607, when they tell him that Gandalf has died, Treebridge says, hmm, come now, he paused, looking long at the hobbits, hmm, well, I do not know what to say. Right. Right. If he was more of a trivial person, he would say, "Whoa, dude, that sucks." So he, here's what strikes me: it's like, so when 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 the hobbits, Merry and Pippin, meet Quickbeam, when Treebeard brings him over, and they yeah. you know have the introductions and stuff like that, and like they describe, you know, Quickbeam laughs when uh, the sun came out. Ha ha ha! He laughs when you know. Right, right, right. You know all you know all this stuff, he, and he's young, and he's kind of like you know re in in relation to to mm -hmm. to Ant, right? Um, it would seem to me like that that the Ants 
just by the nature of 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 tree beer being so old and 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 even like like when they first had when the elves first like um woke the trees up right mm-hmm. and start talking to them they probably weren't that smart you know what i'm talking about they they they, they were probably not they were like like there's like a, an innocence about them you're right right that feels like and and i think that's why like the names are important it's it's th- there's a cynicism that's lacking in in the end so i don't know if that's the right the no, right that's great word. yeah 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 but they they seem like like children that just know a whole lot you know what because i'm saying because they've like, been around for so long because they've been around for so long but but right. you know like they, they still are like enjoy things that are not very complicated you know like mm-hmm. and again like it just kind of occurred to me when when you know, i was reading about uh quick beam right yeah that you know it, it's like something like that a kid would do oh <laughs> look at that it's like you know I don't know. I like help me out here. I, I I'm, no. I'm I, sorry. I, I I I totally follow you. I was I was actually looking for, um, a passage where he says kind of exactly what you're saying, like what the ints used to be like, like in the beginning. Wait, was it one of was it one of Tolkien's letters where he was talking about that? It might have been. I mean, this this is it. This is in a, a Tolkien letter saying what you're just. Saying it says, since Treebeard shows knowledge of the drowned land of Valerian, in which the main action of the war against Morgoth took place, they will have come in a long time ago. But at, as the war in Valerian was at the time of the Hobbits meeting some seven thousand years ago, no doubt they were not quite the same back then. Right. Less wise, less strong, shyer, and more uncommunicable. Their own yeah, language yeah. simpler but their knowledge of other tongues, very small, but I can foresee one action they took not with a blah, blah, blah. So yeah. um, that's exactly what you were saying. And that's why I couldn't find it. Cause it's not in the book. It's in yeah. the letter. Right. The other thing in his letter was saying that he, he like the, the fact that they met Treebeard kind of surprised him. Like he did not plan yeah. yeah. Treebeard. Treebeard was kind of like a, an invention that happened suddenly. And then suddenly it was like, Oh, okay. So, um, I guess they've been around all this time because they're so old, but he had to go kind of almost retro fit or, yeah, you know, basically make up this uh, history. This explains why in the Silmarillion there aren't ants walking around. um, Because? Because they were not as sentient. They were uncommunicable. They would have just been like almost unrecognizable or undistinguishable from trees. Right. Um, so the f- fact that the hobbits don't appear in the lore of living creatures in the list yeah. uh, that Treebeard learned when he was young. Um, I thought yeah, it was kind he of... never ran into the Harfoots, did he? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean... they're not in there. But then um, Pippin's like, why not make a new line? Half-grown hobbits, the hole dwellers. Put us in amongst the four next to the man, the next to man the big people and you've got it yeah why don't they just say like put us at the top <laughs> put yeah. us at the top of the list above the elves no they, yeah we, we, we're here for the elves no but like i said i was surprised that that you know with all the uh the dumbass wandering that the harfoots did that they just didn't like like <laughs> run into fanghorn you know they're right they were, right it seems like they had no idea where they're going. They they were bound to end up there. Some, <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs>